modules symlink to user live httpd modules are loaded. There are other items that are not loaded, but the common items such as authentication related modules are loaded. There's one for LDAP, so if you in fact have LDAP services in your environment, you can tie Apache into it perhaps for authentication. Logging, environmental variables, and many other modules are loaded in the load module section. Now when we're using nano, if you want to know the percentage of a document, execute control C, and this tells us that we've navigated a fifth or 20% of the document. So there are many more comments and directives to go. We did mention that when Apache starts, it reads the primary httpd.conf file. It also includes any .conf files located in the conf.d directory. So if you drop or deposit items into conf.d with a suffix of .conf, they'll be parsed and included in the overall configuration, which means the readme file is not. And at this point in the main configuration file, the files with conf suffixes in the conf.d directory are included. Let's keep going. Whether or not server status information is, ena is enabled, it reveals more information than is necessary and is usually used for debugging. The user and group that Apache should run as, by default, the processes that handle inbound traffic run as the non-privileged user Apache and the non-privileged group Apache. So we're exploring it. We know that Apache runs as Apache as something to keep in mind. HTTPD runs as Apache. Apache and other distributions such as SUSE you might find that Apache runs as a www base user like www run. But in Red Hat, it runs as a user Apache and a group Apache. Now, beyond the global configuration section, we find section number two, which covers the main server's configuration. Apache maintains a main server distinct of or independent of the virtual hosts. And these are things that we should be noting along the way in no particular order. So Apache maintains always a main server which is independent of virtual hosts. This server is a catch-all for traffic that doesn't match any of the defined virtual hosts. So there's a catch-all, there's a default server which serves content out of a directory which we'll see momentarily. And when you move on to virtual hosts, beware that Apache will reroute traffic to your main server if the connecting client does not meet or match any of your virtual hosts. It tells you that in this section as well. Now, what are the key directives for any Apache server? By the way, the directives you find here in the main server configuration apply, for the most part, to virtual hosts as well. So you can learn about how to set up your virtual hosts by studying the directives defined in the main server configuration section of httpd.conf. Here's an important variable, server admin, root at local host. If there's an error connecting to content or accessing content on, on your server, the server admin email address will be returned. Now you may want to make it something such as webmaster at your domain or maybe a fake or fictitious email address, but nonetheless you should define a server admin per virtual host and for the main server. Server name is currently commented out. In this mode it handles everything that doesn't match a virtual host. With virtual hosts you'll see that it becomes very important that we define a server name because Apache will rely upon the client request to determine which virtual host to serve based on the server name, especially when using host header information as opposed to IP-based virtual hosts. Whether or not canonical names are on or off, 
and this deals with self-referencing URLs. They're turned off by default. The document route, very important. This references the location in your file system where the default pages for the server can be found. In this case, var www.html. Other distros like SUSE places those documents in serve www.ht docs. A quick LSL of this path reveals nothing, and we saw with the welcome.com file, if there are no files defined, then the noindex.html file is referenced. In other words, whenever the error is trapped, then at least the default welcome page is served. But if there is a default document, such as index.html, in the var www.html directory, then this server will serve that content to the user and not serve the default page. For each directory that you define that Apache is to have control over, from the root on down to the deepest levels of your directory tree, you should apply rules. And the directory directive allows you to do that, to apply rules on a per directory basis. The main configuration file contains a, a directory directive for the root of the file system. It allows the following of symlinks, and it allows no override from the root of the file system. No override or allow override none means if a user places an HT access hidden file or a file that's read by Apache that contains directives, Apache will ignore the file. So the only thing that may occur from the root of the file system is that Apache will follow symbolic links. So if there's a symlink at the root of the file system which leads to a directory that Apache is permitted to serve, then it'll follow the symlink and serve the content. But this catch-all directory directive for root doesn't influence the document root. It simply influences the root of the file system. It's a way of restricting web users from being able to access content in the root of the file system, as you generally would not want to do that, because then users would have access to your configuration structure beneath ETC to determine how your server is configured and potentially compromise your system. Now, beneath the directory directive, for forward slash, there's a directory directive for where content is to be served, var www.html. The rules here pertain to content f that will live in and below var www.html. So let's just note as another thing regarding this file, and that is that the directory directive governs file system access. So it governs how Apache will interact with that file system path and present it or not present it to connecting users. We should just note, note the primary Apache process runs as root and has access to the full file system. However, the directory directive restricts the web user's view of the file system for valid reasons, of course. So now we see a directory directive for var www.html. Everything between this directory directive block pertains to the file system path var www.html. It governs what's possible from Apache, from Apache's perspective. We see that options are turned on. If content is served from var www.html, which it is for the main configuration, indexes are permitted, which means Apache will formulate a directory structure and present it to the user, similar to viewing it using FTP. If symlinks are defined, Apache will follow them. No overrides are permitted, which means if a hidden HT access file is present, it will simply be ignored. So, so far, the rules, the options that are turned on for var www.html include indexes and follow symlinks. But the reason why you will generally not see a list of files enumerated from var www.html is because 
if there is no default file, such as index.html, the welcome.conf file will see to it that we're served the no index file. So to see the indexing at work or in action, we would need to disable the welcome.conf, which we'll look at in a subsequent section. Let's continue exploring. Now before the directory block for var www.html is closed out, there's some rules. There's an order in which content and permissions may be applied. In this case, the order is set to allow deny, allow from all, which means all users can connect to content served from this directory. There are no restrictions. The order allow deny coupled with allow and deny rules allow you to allow or deny access based on criteria such as a connecting IP or a connecting subnet or a connecting host name. Allow from all means everyone can connect to the content. There are no restrictions. But we'll show you in the security section how to restrict access to specific connecting clients, even specific subnets, since we have multiple subnets to test with. So now the directory block is closed out, and then we're in a section which covers the handling of a particular module. There's an if module directive, and it is used to test whether or not a module is loaded. And if it is mo loaded, then various directives are followed. So if mod user directory is called, then it follows the rules you see here. User directory is set to disable, which means users will be unable to publish content from their home directories. If you want to override this feature, then change disable to enable. Ensure that the mod underscore user dir module is loaded. And then instruct, we start to instruct users to serve content or to publish content to their home directories. And then users will be able to access it. And so long as it's beneath the user's home directory and the directory name public underscore HTML providing we uncomment this directive, then the user will be able to serve the content from their web server using the path to the web server, such as an IP address, followed by tilde in the name of the user and the name of the content or a default file. And there are many more directives. We'll continue exploring httpd.conf next, and then we'll start the server and manipulate some of its features.